New NPR shows majority of Americans don't like political correctness. Senate Majority Leader announces a bill that will avoid a government shutdown. Lastly, newly elected Congressman Dan Crenshaw sends out a helping hand to an SNL celebrity who was in trouble. This is A Better World, and I'm your host, Luis Acevedo. Starting off today, we're going to go over the poll that was conducted by NPR, PBS NewsHour, and Marxist. And what it showed is that 52% of Americans are against be our country becoming more politically correct and are upset that there are too many things people can't say anymore. Now, there are one-third of the people who were a part of this poll that actually thought political correctness was a good thing and that you should be more sensitive to people in the comment section and in real life. So watch what you say is what one-third of Americans actually believe. So the majority in that group who were in favor of political correctness just happened to be 18 to 29-year-olds, Democrats, surprise, surprise, and African Americans. I think that the reason for this is rather simple. And it has to do with the narrative of victimhood and this intersectionality that has arose over the past couple of years. We have started to promote the idea there are certain groups who are oppressed and there are certain groups who are the oppressors. Therefore, there is certain language that is spewed by the oppressors that will actually hurt the oppressed and further their already stressful lives or increase their already stressful lives. That's essentially why these groups believe in political correctness and are essentially creating the way for hate speech to become a staple in our country, which is pretty frightening. But what I found pretty funny is that although there are majority young people and Democrats and African Americans who are the ones who predominantly uh, agree with political correctness, the nation overall is pretty much split with the idea that they can't speak their mind anymore. So it's 47 to 47 for those who feel they can speak their mind and those who can't. And of that group, 58% of men actually believe they can't speak their mind anymore, while only 50, 43%, I'm sorry, of women believe that they can't speak their mind anymore. And I've held this belief for a long time, and that is all political correctness is is incremental steps to slowly chip away at the First Amendment without touching it until, as we see now, until the mainstream media and the mainstream culture in general picks up censorship and gets behind hate speech. This is not a right-wing point of view. This is a objective point of view. This has nothing to do with a political ideology whatsoever because there are examples right here in our country of this actually being the case. We see in New York, it is actually illegal and you can be fined if you misgender somebody. What the hell? If you misgender... So if I call a man who may look like a woman a woman on accident, or if I jokingly say it, I'm breaking the law. That's what that's saying. And it's so wrong on so many levels. And this is just the beginning. These are just the building blocks. We need to be very aware of what's going on. Americans, by and large, do not like this idea. Unfortunately, the people who do like this idea are the young people, which isn't good. That's my generation, our generation. We shouldn't like that. I, I believe the reason for that not only has to do with the victimhood mentality that's being cultivated in our society, but it also has to do with the coddling that a lot of people in our generation experienced. 
our parents were extremely overprotective. I know me personally, I had sort of helicopter parents when I was younger. As I got older, they started to just let me do as I pleased, obviously within, you know, reasonable standards. They gave me pretty much free reign. But when I was younger, they were pretty much helicopter parents. And I know a lot of people had that same issue growing up, but unlike me, it continued for the rest of their lives and maybe they still have helicopter parents and the schools now are allowing children and parents to eat lunch together in the cafeteria Ch parents are spoon feeding their children in middle school I mean we're just exacerbating the problem here and quite literally cultivating a society of dependency and victimhood which is going to literally be the demise of America if we do not become bankrupt before that. So that's, you know, the thing is, I, I think that the only time somebody should be punished for what they say is if they incite violence. But we don't even have a basic framework to actually go upon with that because we see people who don't support Donald Trump and are able to say whatever they want. For instance, Madonna. She stated she wanted to blow up the White House. That's illegal. That's inciting violence. That's threatening the President of the United States. Nobody said anything about that. Which makes me really concerned about the push to advance the agenda of hate speech. All it's going to do is disproportionately hurt one political party over the other. Whoever's in power is then going to use hate speech to their advantage. That's what's going to happen. I don't know why we can't see that. I don't know why we keep wanting to give more power to our elected officials when it takes away freedoms from us. It just, it just isn't a smart idea whatsoever. And we should really be leery of this because the only people who want hate speech who want to regulate speech are Democrats. And like I've stated in previous episodes, time and time again, it appears that they are the party that will do whatever it takes to get votes. They don't give a damn about you or I, as long as you send them a couple dollars or you put their name on a ballot come election season. After that, it doesn't matter. They're going to do what they want to do. They're going to try and change your mind to believe in their agenda as opposed to listening to the needs of their constituents. That's exactly what takes place. And it, it's obvious. It's really obvious. Everybody can see it. And that's why... The media doesn't like our president right now because he doesn't do that. He listened to the people. He went out and he campaigned on things that people actually care about, which are, we need to bring back manufacturing jobs. We need to build a wall or at least stop illegal immigration because it is hurting employment here in America. And for those of you who don't believe that, I implore you to do further research past the mainstream media. Go look at the actual studies conducted that show immigrants come over here uh, and illegal immigrants, that is, come over here and actually devalue the market wages for American workers. That's what happens because they'll do the work for less money, meaning if a American employer can have the job done for less money, they're going to do that. 
And then in order to hire an American, they're going to need to then pay you minimum wage to do a job that can be done for $5 an hour by an illegal immigrant. That's one major factor as to why people in America were upset because they realize that, yeah, illegal immigrants actually are driving down wages. We're not stupid. President Trump knew that. He saw the issue and he campaigned on it and won because of it. Now, we see the mainstream media is not able to handle that, nor were the establishment Republicans or the Democrats. He's actually trying to follow through on his campaign promises. We just saw what the federal judge in Texas did by trying, well, not trying, but actually uh, ruling Obamacare unconstitutional since the tax mandate was no more. We see him reworking a deal for NAFTA. And now he's trying to build the wall. We'll touch on the wall in a little bit. I want to get back to the topic at hand here, which is this study, I mean, this poll that was conducted. So getting to where I was going with that statement is 70% of Americans currently believe that there has been a lack of civility within Washington. A majority of them blame the media, which is why I said everything I said at the beginning, because they understand that 99% of the time what they're saying is either half-truths or complete dis, uh, uh, misinterpreted, incorrect information, not reliable. And so it's 37% of people believe the media is to blame, 35% of people believe President Trump's to blame. I can't give the whole, I can't give all of the blame to the media. I know I've been dogging on them for a while now. But I think President Trump actually plays a role in this as well. I don't think his language of calling the press the enemy of the people, although I know I have defended it in the past, and I will continue to do so, I don't believe it is a statement that a president should have made. I really don't. And, But there's nothing you can do about it, because he's already said it. And he was 100% right. I just didn't think it was, it was presidential. And if you really think that the media is unbiased in their outrage towards President Trump, the latest example to show that to not be true is the coverage and treatment for the Trump Foundation. And he had a lawsuit from an attorney general, from the former attorney general from New York, who ended up resigning because of sexual misconduct. And he was saying that the Trump Foundation was using the funds in non-appropriate and inappropriate ways. Everybody was up in arms about this. Now the Trump Foundation has dissolved. But we don't hear anything, not one peep about the Clinton Foundation. Not one. We talked about it for a little bit, but completely let, let, it, let it go. When that was an actual pay-for-play scheme. We know that for a fact now, being Hillary Clinton no longer has any power, and the donations have went down by $38 million or something. When she was in power, Bill Clinton was getting almost a million dollars to do speeches. That seems like the real scandal to me, but, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's okay if you're not on the right. If you're on the re left, you can say whatever you want, you can do whatever you want, and they'll throw it under the rug. Who cares? But... The fact is, if Democrats keep up with these tactics of identity politics that are sowing a division within our country, using political correctness, they're going to lose uh, the election in 2020. President Trump will win the election again because this is one of the reasons why he won was to stand up against political correctness on top of all the other stuff that I said earlier. Meanwhile, in the Senate... Mitch McConnell 
has announced a bill that will fund the government through February 8th. Now, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said Democrats would support the bill, which is no surprise because he has already said he would agree to a CR on a couple of occasions, uh, most notably in the Oval Office. Now, the resolution will not include the $5 billion funding for the border wall. President Trump at one time said he would not fund the government without the wall, but it appears he is weakened on that stance. Press Secretary Sarah Sanders told Fox News on Tuesday, we have other ways that we can get that $5 billion. We don't want to shut down the government. We want to shut down the border from illegal immigration. This to me is a shame because President Trump is undoubtedly uh, won the showdown between Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, especially when he made the point that he would shut down the government for border security. I mean, come on, Mr. President. <laughs> the American people elected you part and parcel for that reason. There's a lot of other reasons, but mainly that reason. And if he doesn't live up to his campaign promise, he's going to have a hard time getting reelected in 2020. Like a very hard time. The Democrats don't want him to get elected in 2020. The mainstream media doesn't want him to get elected in 2020. That's why they're working so hard to combat the wall. Although they were for funding Iran, giving them $150 billion during the Obama administration, you know, the country that chants death to America on a routine basis. Also, we just gave, what, $5.8 billion to Central America uh, for economic and government development, and $4.8 billion to the development aid for southern Mexico. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have given money to these two countries, but what I am saying is that Democrats have no problem giving billions of dollars to other countries. That billion, Those billions of dollars come from you and I, the taxpayer. They're willing to use our tax dollars to fund other countries, but when it comes to their own country, they won't give a dime to better enhance our border security. This is disgraceful, and they should be ashamed of themselves. And I really think President Trump should stand his ground and not cave to the stock gap. Call their bluff. Force them into a corner. Do not give up this fight, especially right before Democrats take control of the House. Right now is when you need to push it through. I am 100% serious, and if he drops the ball on this, Democrats take over the House, he doesn't fulfill his campaign promise. Maybe there's other ways he can do it. Maybe there's something I'm missing. But it seems pretty obvious this is the opportune this is the most opportune time for him to do this in other news despite everything that's going on that's chaotic and the american people's belief that washington has become more hostile and dishonest across all party lines there's a story that took place over the weekend that is that will restore your faith in humanity that is, newly elected Congressman Dave Crenshaw of Texas, he reached out to Pete Davison from SNL after he shared what appeared to be a suicidal message on Instagram over the weekend. Now, Davidson is the guy who made a bad joke about Crenshaw uh, regarding his eye in which he lost some war. Afterwards, Pete invited Crenshaw to uh, the show to have a talk, and which they did, and it was a sign of solidarity, and they got along, they joked, and Crenshaw, you know, ended up making a joke about him, and everybody was happy, it was a good thing to do, right? Well, and Davison's Instagram message, well, after his Instagram message that, you know, in his Instagram photo he posted, he had a caption underneath it, Crenshaw then reached out to him, and this is what he said. Uh, I don't know exactly what he said to uh, Pete Davison, but this is what he told uh, a, a interviewer. Actually, I talked to him personally yesterday, and he talked to me for a little bit about it. And, you know, 
we don't go very far back. We're not good friends, but I think he appreciated hearing from me. And what I told him was this, everybody has a purpose in, in this world. God put you here for a reason, but it's your job to find that purpose. I mean, what a class act guy. Seriously, this is how you restore civility, especially in the political climate that we have today. Despite these two having completely different political beliefs, he still reached out to him. That's what you do as a decent human being. We don't let politics interfere, especially when it comes to something like that. At the end of the day, we're all Americans, and whatever this country goes through, we go through. Right now, our country is experiencing a mental health crisis. Suicides are increasing rapidly, causing the life expectancy in America to decrease. Crenshaw was 100% right when he stated, God put you here for a reason, and you have to find that purpose. And that purpose is something we are lacking as a nation. The reason we're lacking that as a nation, this is my opinion, obviously, is due to the culture steering away from religion as a whole. In the end, without religion, it leaves most of us lost and nihilistic. The result is depression, which, if untreated, can turn into suicide. And Unfortunately, there's a lot of untreated depression. I'm not saying you can't... I'm not saying that all the time, an intervention, medicine, or whatever, will help somebody who's depressed and suicidal. There's just some things you can't do. I get that. But there's no doubt that the nihilism and lack of purpose in our society today has to do with our culture as a whole becoming secular. Whether or not you believe in God, if you have no optimistic outlook on the future in the world after you're gone, then it kind of makes the life you live today seem pointless and meaningless. Especially when you're somebody who doesn't have any power. You can have influence within your network and things of that nature, but I'm talking real world changing power. Most of us don't have that. 99% of us will never have that. And with that being said, it leaves those of us who don't believe in an afterlife, don't believe in a God, to feel that what we're doing here is worthless, will make no change whatsoever. We have nothing to pass down to generations. There's just no optimistic outlook. But it's really refreshing to see something like this. It really is. And hopefully Pete Davidson can get the help he needs to beat this depression because life is too valuable. So if you know someone who's having a hard time, don't be afraid to give them a call. Don't be. Or a text message or a DM, whatever way you want to reach out to them, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter how well you know them. I mean, Dan Crenshaw admitted that they're not good friends. They don't go far back. They only met one time, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe they had dinner a couple other times. I'm not sure. Bottom line is, it doesn't matter how well you know somebody. If you see somebody in your timeline, in your news feed, whatever, that's sharing a message of distress and showing that they're in a weak spot in their life, just check in on them. Something as small as that can help them get through the darkest of times. That's what we need to do. I know I criticize the left a lot. I, I dislike a lot of what they're doing. I typically just disagree with the people in power and what their agenda is. As far as the people who support them, I believe one of two things. Either they are... There's three things I would say. Either they are not fully aware of the consequences of the actions 
that of, of the consequences of their actions from these policies that uh, that will stem from these policies or they are in line with it and have malevolent intentions as well and lastly which I think the first and the third one this one are the two most likely ones for just the average person is with a sense of nihilism the Democratic Party kind of gives you something to replace religion with as we see the environment we see politics becoming mainstream everybody's talking about it nowadays and so if you lost that sense of religion you're trying to fill it back with these beautiful ideas that the left promotes but in reality they're demonstra they're, they're monstrous so that's the news for today I hope you all enjoyed it, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Peace.